hello guys. My name is Ming Hans Law. My name sounds a bit weird because I'm from Burma. And I'm a university student here. I'm currently, uh, I'm sort of graduating and doing my research here a bit. And I'm working on some uh, live analysis stuff and data related stuff. I come from a C++ background, but I got to Breakmark uh, not so long ago. And I'm sort of like, yeah, I'm really experienced with Python, but I'm trying to <laughs> get better at it. Uh, so I just want to share that of like, you know, uh, I've worked with the robot framework in, um, in my work. So I just wanted to share my experience with you guys. And if you guys have any feedbacks or questions, you know, feel free to throw it around. Yeah. Uh, and this is my uh, GitHub. Um, yeah, you guys can go and look at my uh, preppy codes and everything. Um, so going to the robot framework, I want to talk a little bit about uh, acceptance testing. And uh, yeah. So um, if you guys have worked in the production, and I'm sure have like uh, you guys would probably be familiar with acceptance testing and a lot of things that come with it. Like uh, it's the process which uh, is used to define acceptability of the system. So before you deliver it to the customer and like sort of something fails and that happens a lot because we have to roll back. And if you don't want to go through that map, you do acceptance testing because your boss will probably eat you out <laughs> if you do. That. Um, yeah, so we have to go through this general processes and today. Uh, talk about doing it with robot framework. So uh, it's sort of easy to mind the if it fits the business broker right and like if it's good enough for delivery to the customer. Uh, so yeah, it's not a lot, but yeah. Uh, UAT, uh, so there's this difference between the UAT user acceptance testing and unit testing. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it as well, but I just want to get into that a little bit. So like testing of the individual unit, you sort of write the code and you write a method in a class you have to test it out if it works and everything using sometimes you use mock functions and yeah uh, there's sort of like uh, different libraries for that as well yeah so functional t testing is different though you have you are testing the functional functionality of the application uh, in practice with the web apps like yeah, you, you can do it manually you can go and click around and see if your apps works and see if everything is good or you could do it automatically using robot framework right test case and then it sort of come back together in, in one concise way. So like, uh, you could keep reusing the test cases, and that's the philosophy behind it. And that's pretty good because it's pretty cool because you don't need to uh, like you don't need to find one guy to look at all of your web applications. Like, and uh, you don't need to you sort of don't need to go through anything at all. You just write the test cases very concisely, and then you can keep reusing them. It sort of becomes a very wonderful thing after you've written like many uh, many deliverables. Like you will know that it's a pretty good thing. Uh, you don't have to go through that, excuse my language, pain in the ass process of like, you know, keep testing like same thing manually. Yeah. So that's sort of why I like robot framework and it's with Python. So, yeah. So it's only done after the phases of following testing, unit testing, integration testing, system testing. So it's like the final step before it reaches the customer. It's like sort of scary, but um, because then you'll probably deliver a very um, a, something that's not into about like something that's very buggy or yeah it doesn't work if it breaks you have to work back and you know it will ruin your Friday night you can't go out anymore yeah so it's important to do and it's done after all the testing phases so another thing is that it's done from the perspective of the user not from the side of the developer and, and everything because it goes on the production and yeah so you sort of have to find this cosmetic way of looking at it. You have to go to the GUI yourself, or you could use a robot framework and you know just sort of watch the machine does it. Uh, so it's done in the GUI side, and it's it's the only done to make sure that the user can use what they are meant to use. Yeah. So uh, getting into uh, robot framework a little bit, uh, uh, it's very it's very it's a very small thing. You can uh, download it using pip. Yeah, you can also use the API interfaces. Like, yeah, and so there are massive amount of libraries available. It's open source. That's why it's very interesting. That's what makes it interesting. So it uses Selenium. Of course, uh, we're doing. Uh, it uses Selenium because it sort of like go through. I'm talking, generally, I'm talking about web testing here. So like Selenium driver and everything to route through different selectors and paths. Uh, and to, to you know, sort of like go through the functionality of your web app, 
or, or a page that you simply want to test. Uh, it's also keyword-driven testing. I'm sort of like I'm going to get into it. It's based on Gherkin style uh, language. That means that it's 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 very understandable. If you write, if you write a robot framework test case, like your bot and if you write it very concisely, everybody who reads your code and uh, like and your will understand it and they will have no question about it. But um, I also kind of come back to this, like it could create, you could also like, if you keep adding the test cases again and again, you don't like sort of refactor it again. I don't know if it's the right work, but like, yeah, if you don't refactor it, then you will end up with a bunch of test cases that you can use and you'll have no idea how to handle it. So it's also important to write it concisely and everything. So a uh, Gherkin style, so it basically means it's very, it's yeah, it's a keyword-based language, and there are like definitions for every keyword that you will define for each test case. As I'll go into that. Um, if you are testing a web app, then it uses robot framework uses ASPAD, CSS, IDs, classes, etc. So yeah, it's very simple. You just if you uh, elements in the around the web, you can you can sort of like route your uh, robot framework test cases through it, and then you can see if it fails or if it passes. Yeah. It's a very smooth thing, although it takes quite, quite like uh, since it's doing it's using the web driver on one like you know uh, it have to open up this different uh, different browser window and it to route the app and it's like a third party thing so yeah it takes some time um, open and it is open source and runs on Python because it's a Java virtual machine but with Python yeah and Iron Python and it have a very active community and a GitHub code base which is open. So you can look through it, and uh, it's also like it's very solving. Where you have a problem, you go post it there, and they'll probably reply to you. And also, uh, it's sort of getting more popular like nowadays, since like a lot of yeah, web applications um, like base frameworks are coming out. So they probably like a web framework. It's also free, so yeah, yeah. Um, in in that um, something test driven environment. Uh, Framework is popular for its agility, easy to use, and multiple interface ports. It, it even supports Jenkins, and yeah, it have like a plugin for <coughs> a lot of things. Um, Jenkins, I think you can use it with Eclipse. Both of the framework. Um, <coughs> so yeah, also the robot framework work, work on the browsers using web drivers like Gecko, etc. Yeah. <coughs> So yeah, as I have mentioned, like back then, <coughs> uh, it uses it tests the static pages using the CSS paths, paths, everything. Yeah. Uh, another amazing thing about it, uh, it supports like uh, native OS testing, <coughs> which means you can sort of call the functionality of <coughs> uh, like uh, commands from your computer and everything. Uh, if you, of course import that library uh, while you're writing that test case. So you can sort of tell your computer to wait <coughs> for five seconds or sleep or change directory if you want to do that. Uh, I, I haven't seen any cases where I need to change directory, but yeah. Also, uh, you can even test your databases if you want. <coughs> sort of see like if your database is responding or if you can like sort of insert something in a, a certain table to see if it's working and everything. Also, many other procedural testing with uh, different libraries. <coughs> I'm going to show a little demo uh, with Robot Framework uh, using the um, D version and the command version. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so it's developed. It's initially developed by Nokia. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's why it's probably minimalistic and very, uh, uh, very useful in many ways. It's also used by many other different companies with a lot of funding from third parties. And that's what make it yeah available for free, yeah. So it's, it's I think it's still developed by Nokia. It's, it's like a head, but like yeah, a lot of like third party contributors come on GitHub and like they contribute their codes and everything. It's a good thing. So these are the libraries that I want to like point out. I hope you guys can see it. <coughs> There's even a library for uh, Android phones and stuff. Like you can sort of uh, use the library test the Android app archive library. Uh, Database library. There's a library for uh, uh, CNC. Like million. I don't know why we would need that, but yeah. Uh, there's a fake library for test data generator. HTTP libraries. Yeah. Uh, I 
most of the library. I have only used like the web drivers uh, to test the web app. That's where I come from. Yeah, if you're uh, good with that, you can probably write your own script using Java or uh, Python, although it's not going to be really productive. If you like, if you have like situation where you cannot really avoid writing your own scripts, uh, then you should do it. But if you could, then you should stick to the, the GERD because it's very easy and like it's sort of very convenient for other people, uh, for new persons coming onto the team and testing it out later. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, so it's like the sort of in installations uh, stuff that you would need to run the uh, uh, robot framework. Uh, we only need Python 2.7, but you can also run it with uh, Python 3. But uh, the thing is, uh, if you want to run the IDE version of it, um, <coughs> the graphical version of it, then you, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you want to run the IDE version of it, it won't work on the Python 3. Also, you need WH Python for that, and it works with this weird 2.8.12 2 version. And so it only works with 32 bit only. It's very selective if you work with IDE. But if you're comfortable with the command line and everything, uh, it's very good. Like, it works in every version of Python, and you don't need WH Python. <clears throat> yeah, if you have pip or easy install, that makes it easier uh, because you sort of need this, like, different. Uh, different pip installation where you can isolate the uh, environment variables for installation that you're going to make like pigment for example it's used to like it's used to like highlight the synthesis of the test cases that you're going to write so you, you don't want to pollute your globals for that so you need a very, very isolated for, for it and that's why I'm using virtual ENV and virtual environment wrapper for Windows uh, why am I using the wrapper because it makes Comment life a lot easier, and yeah, you, you can probably like get get done with your work a lot, a lot faster. So yeah, it's the productivity that we're talking about. Also, yeah, robot framework. You know, you need to download it using pip. <coughs> uh, yeah. And web drivers for Chrome, it's Chrome driver. For Firefox, it's Get. Um, both of them work. Uh, I prefer Chrome and uh, Firefox over Chrome uh, because it's sort of make like it's it's good. And, like, just like Firefox, yeah. And Selenium 2 library, um, I think they've changed the name of the library now. It's just Selenium library. It's updated to sort of like the latest version every now and then. Back then, it only works with Selenium 2 library, which is like the latest version. Now, I think it's got, got updated. And a machine to run. Um, Robert, um, if you're doing front end testing and functional testing, <coughs> it's not like unit testing takes a very short amount of time. For, but for uh, functional testing and front end testing, it needs, it, it takes quite a bit of time and it also takes the whole machine. It's very, like, it gets, like, hot because you're running, like, a lot of functionalities on the front end version of the computer. Like, so the browser is sort of, like, generally going through all those selectors and everything, clicking on them virtually. <coughs> and drivers are loading into the memory and everything, so the computer gets a bit hot. That's you, need. you either get a separate machine to run or you don't do any work while you're doing it. That's why we sort of like whenever we deliver uh, products into the production thing I have to do it on like Friday evening which is such a uh, I makes my night like miserable and I sort of like miss out this tea gift thing uh, but uh, you do it on Friday evening you do it once you do it right then get delivered and you get to go home very easily or else like yeah so that's why I keep my machine clean and I don't do any uh, coding or anything like that while I'm doing the robot framework test cases, yeah. So installation is very easy. You just sort of say pip install. If you have Python and all those packages, <coughs> you just say pip install robot framework, and it will install the robot framework for you. And then pip install Selenium library, robot framework Selenium library. That will sort of like integrate the library for robot framework. <coughs> and then uh, robot framework, uh, like robot framework ID. It will give you like the visual version of the framework and everything. Uh, pigment is like important because it, it can sort of like uh, highlight the synthesis and everything, which you guys will see in a minute. And yeah, so the, yeah, the synthesis is very like if you want to go to like CLI version and just want to run the test case, it's very simple. You just say robot and like path to the test case. Like yeah, you just so write the path and like dot robot and just run it, it will work. And uh, 
back then we didn't have like this robot syntax. Just say Python minus M robot and then test dot robot, which was sort of like the keywords and everything like yeah, compile it into the Python version, which will be run by Python. And it's yeah, for the Python three, it's sort of like the same thing. Yeah. So I sort of wanted to get into the keyword Gherkin. Yeah. So Gherkin in the Gherkin language, like whenever you write something, you say say in this condition, and when this happened and this happened. Successful, and then <clears throat> and then the condition always end with an and or something like that. So it's sort of like a syntax. You don't need to use it. Like it's not very restrictive. It's not really, yeah, it's not really a constraint either. But it's it sort of like makes it clear to the person who's reading your test case. It's like, oh, okay, uh, I know what's happening now. Log log page is going to open, and one user clicks on it to enter the username and enter user uh, enter password. Login should be successful, and then tear down test basically mean you're going to tear down the whole testing it's just going to close the browser and everything if the test passes yeah uh, there are some tips that I want to share with you guys if yeah uh, just if you don't want to pollute your globals and everything just keep like your um, your uh, required package in the requirements or sort of like a test file and then use pip install minus r yeah globals just isolate everything uh, just put it in the virtual environment Whichever sort of like you prefer, but I use virtual ENV. Yeah, just don't pollute your globals. It's going to like make your life messy if you were to you know work on the production environment and you work. We want to work on a different thing. Test cases are like not the thing that you work on every day. It's just a simple testing thing. So <clears throat> and keep a sheet. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Find an efficient way to kill a gecko after the test because it's important. Gecko drivers and Chrome drivers, it doesn't generally go away after your test is done. They just remain in memory. Uh, if you go into your test manager, you will see them. So uh, my suggestion is if you're in, like, uh, if you're in Windows, then you have to probably write a bash script. Yeah. You have to probably write a bash script to, to kill all of your processes after you're done. Because you can do like sort of like multiple tests at, at some time. And so yeah, uh, write a simple bash script. And the, and like robot framework takes screenshots after all of the tests are done like each time the tests are done and if passes or it fails it takes a screenshot of the screen so you also have to write a simple script to delete all of the screenshots at one point yeah uh, those little things you have to keep in mind if you want to yeah do the testing very efficiently um, keep a record sheet because that's a good thing that you can show your boss that it passed when you were doing it also sort of like give you uh, it's sort of like give you the okay of everything that happened during the test. For example, you might be missing an element, and, and or or someone in the uh, front end changed like the uh, CSS selector or class ID or something like that. That might mess up your test. So you you want to keep a record of everything that happens while testing, even if you change it and it doesn't matter, so that you can show your boss that this happened, but the test passed and yeah, so it can come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah. Bug free. Your criteria could be complete, but it doesn't guarantee usability. It happens. Yeah, it happens once. Like it, the test sort of passed because our um, while we wrote the test, we wrote it very carelessly. So it's like clicking the button, but it doesn't know what happens on the screen and everything. We didn't keep track. It's just like sort of show error messages. But we ended when we clicked the button. Stuff, sort of stuff like that. We can we can just presume that okay, this test passed and it's deliverable. No, it's not like that. Sometimes it doesn't mean it, it means that you just written a good test case, but your your uh, your code is not deliverable. Yeah. So while I was talking about the record sheet, it was it looks something like this with the one that we used at the office, but this one I got. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, you can see the scope of expected results, and if the if your testing meet expected results, then yeah, you can deliver it to the customer or, or to the production. Uh, that's why I like Robot Framework. Another reason, uh, they have a very detailed report. They, uh, even the web drivers produce a very good log report. And if you're sort of like into uh, the Python, um, uh, the API, sorry, the API and everything, you can sort of like determine which routes that the, does the log go and everything. <coughs> and you can also customize it very well. Uh, yeah. um, so the log reports are good, and if the test fails, 
if you like the detailed reason of why it fails and where it fails and the time time and everything so it's it's sort of very, like done very well yeah i'm gonna get to you guys in, in a while <clears throat> yeah so this is how the framework uh operates there's going to be a test data and then the the, the data that you're going to use to test the uh the the app that you're going to test, and then the robot framework, and then you're going to use the library, uh, test library, and yeah, and here's the test tool, and here's the system and the test. Uh, this image will sort of like make it more clear. Yeah. Um, see, uh, here you um, you have like Selenium library, database library, so it's, it has a lot of libraries, so I can't even remember some time. So if you want to test the database, then it will have a rem remote uh, procedural call to the database, and you know it. it you wanted to do like inserting a value or check if the if the table exists or check if like the database responds or something like that uh, if it's a selenium library yeah it'll make a tcp ip <coughs> connection to uh, using the selenium server it will connect to the web server using http um it'll, it'll, like it'll sort of creates a uh, own um isolated environment in the browser and it'll test your app or whatever you want to test yeah um here you write the test implementation test suits like um, it yeah so yeah that's it talking about the style there are some things that I want to make sure that you guys know after uh, after if you want to start writing robot framework which is yeah so in the settings you, we declare de declare libraries and everything and some sort of the tweaks that we want to make during the test case. Documentation is like just basically documenting documenting the test case variables, just variable assignment. Test cases are like keyword. Uh, so first, you just define the keyword to make sure that it, it works. Uh, like uh, in the keyword, you use the inbuilt library functions and everything, and then you sort of use the test cases to call this keyword again and make a definition so that it's readable and it's deployable for for the test scenario. So I want to show a quick demo. <clears throat> so, this is like a robot framework uh, IDE. Hope you guys can see it. It's a bit blurry. But uh, when you write uh, something like this, uh, it's like, yeah, you declare the library here. And in, in the library, I've used Selenium library and a built in library. Um, built in just like using with sleep and stuff like that some simple uh, operators that you want to use selenium library for the web testing uh yeah <laughs> you can sort of see my temporary password here it doesn't matter uh i'm i'm going to run this and show it to you guys how it works it's very simple login page is open user clicks on the login link to enter username and your password and you just like sleep for 10 seconds click on this element and for another eight seconds uh, I want to add quickly to this. Uh, sleep is generally not good. Use some other conditions. I don't know what. Just like it's based on your situation as well. Like, but don't use sleep. It's just avoid it. I'm just doing this for the demo. Also, login should be successful. A page contain like a final watch, which I define here. Uh, AWS services. If like if the conditions are met, then it's going to be a it's going it's going to be a pass. If it doesn't, it's going to be a fail. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so I'll fill very quickly. Um, Demo to work uh, very differently when I'm showing it to people. So just hang on for a while. <coughs> yeah. Uh, here you can see my files, and this test robot, the one that I have like. <coughs> The one up here. So yeah, I'm just going to run it very quick using robot. Yeah. So a browser will pops up, and it's sort of controlled by the uh, synthesis of Firefox, controlled by the Gecko driver, and yeah, it goes into the like it just logs in. But uh, so there's like some problem security problem with AWS, so it's not going to type that password. <coughs> I have to do it manually, uh, which is good, considering it's a demo. So yeah, um, it, it will sort of go through the AWS. The connection is taking a while. Um, here you can see a little indication that it's, yeah. Yeah. 
then it waits and sleeps for yeah. Then it locks in and boom, we're in. Um, it sort of like, yeah, it goes through all the condition and here you can see the keyword AWS services. It, it have met the condition, so it will like keep looking for the keyword. If, uh, if the robot framework found the keyword, then it will say the test have passed. It's a quick report of how it generates report and everything. So yeah, hold on. <coughs> lock. Uh, this is uh, it will show you like the execution lock and how how it passed and how it filled time elapsed. <coughs> is a report. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you run through the command. Uh, I don't want you guys to use the IDE version of it because as you guys have seen, like it, it sort of fails try to do it so yeah just use CLI version is good yeah there are a lot of arguments that you can do like saying okay I want this timestamp to be there I want to use this tag which you can sort of do later if you got into it like really seriously uh, yeah this is the thing that I generally talk about declaring the libraries here and yeah declaring the variables here it's sort of useless <coughs> to uh, hide the password now since you guys have seen it uh, it's very data driven could build a single base variable file for test case. So when you're coming together as a team and working as uh, working with like five developers, and you want to you want them to build their own test cases after each development, uh, after each sprint and stuff like that, uh, you could build a single base variable file and use that use that as a data file and then like parse it into the command line. And yeah, uh, uh, we have used a v like yeah we have used a VC with a PyCharm or something like that back then. It it sort of works. Yeah. Uh, if you refactor it and abstract it some, uh, somehow, very, like in a, in a own way, uh, it's like building your own library. It's it's very good. It's you will you will come uh, after all the hard and pain, <coughs> pain uh, like painful processes. You'll have a very concise test case. Like you don't you won't you won't have to build uh, a ground up test case every Friday. You, yeah, your life would be good after you put in a little bit more work. Clear and concise definition make it easier to test every time since there's no need to rewrite the cases. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, if you're a guy who like uh, like to play things dangerously and yeah, who like to sort of do your own script and everything, methods are keywords. So you can sort of import the robot framework API. Uh, here you can see like you can define your own keyword. Yeah, using the syntax. And uh, here you can like see that I have to find like my own keyword using def definition my keywords. It sort of become a like, keyword. It's so methods are generally keyword API. Yeah. Uh, you can say you can also define the text and yeah you can the functions what you want to do if the keywords are being called. <coughs> I have a script, but yeah. Uh, also, we can yeah that's it. We can get into the custom template and you can sort of include the library you know uh, to to make sure you want to keep things in your own pace. If you want to write something that that will to calculate stuff and like spit it out as a value. But you don't want to do it using robot frameworks inbuilt library, but you want to do it using your own way, your own script, and your own keywords. You can do it. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, API for that too. Or if you don't like API, you can just sort of import your own. Uh, you can just sort of import your own Python, and then like return the value and parse it into Python again. Sort of talk and yeah, hope you guys like it. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. I'm not sure we got. Time for questions because uh, we've gone over a little bit. <laughs>